welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to meet Miss Virginia USA, Desiree Williams. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. You are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> you, um, have, this isn't the first pageant that you've been entered in or that you've won, but you also have this whole other side of um, being a physical therapist, teaching physical therapy at HU. Um, how do you do all that? Like, I'm just going to jump to the gut question here. <laughs> I keep a really detailed schedule, and that's what I've always told people is that time management is key with anything. Um, and I'm, I'm maybe a little bit anal about it, but I literally will plan out hour by hour what I'm going to do each each day. And sometimes, like, in 30-minute blocks, or else I just wouldn't get it all done. I'm, well, feel you, like I'm <laughs> you have to. I mean, you got not your, just your undergraduate degree, but a Ph.D., and you're teaching, and you're a physical therapist in different locations in the community, and now you've got appearances as Miss Virginia USA. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun, it's certainly demanding, but this is sort of the time, the only time in my life where I'd have this opportunity. So if I've got to work hard and lose a little bit of sleep, to me, <laughs> it's, it's worthwhile because I know it's only temporary and I've got to seize, seize every opportunity. Well, how did you get into pageants? I mean, okay, people who, like me, who wouldn't qualify for a beauty pageant ever in their whole life, it's a different culture, and a lot of people come to it and have been in it, you know, with the little kids stuff and, and stay in that kind of culture, but you didn't. No, and, and it was initially very intimidating. I, of course, I watched the Miss America pageant as a kid growing up absolutely. and the Miss USA pageant. And you just look at those women on stage and think, I can absolutely never be like that. I can never look like that. I'm not tall enough, thin enough, pretty enough. And so I certainly had all of those reservations to start. No. Um, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. I didn't wake up this way. <laughs> so I certainly had all those same reservations. But for me, it was just getting outside of my comfort zone. Um, but kind of a funny story, my very first pageant, I wanted to be our school's homecoming qu queen, kind of. Um, so as a senior <laughs> in high school, I visited HU. And it happened to be honors weekend, which was the same weekend as the Miss Hampton University pageant. So I came with my mother and my grandmother. And we had we went to the pageant after the pageant I sort of looked at my mom and grandma and said you know if I come to Hampton I'm going to be Miss Hampton University did you really <laughs> so and you're the kind of person when you set a goal you go for it don't you yeah, I mean I can tell but actually I didn't really intend to go to Hampton at the time <laughs> was it in your family or no no I didn't have a connection to Hampton at all so I really didn't intend to go to Hampton it was sort of a false promise uh, uh, but then I ended up at Hampton I got offered a full academic scholarship and congratulations ended... Thank you. that's wonderful Wonderful. So I ended up there, forgot about that entire promise, because of course it was a false promise at the time. You, but you're an 18 year old <laughs> kid. What do you know? Right. But this is an appropriate time of year because Thanksgiving year, my Thanksgiving, my junior year of college, my grandmother approached me and sort of said, Desi, aren't you supposed to be doing a pageant? And I thought, she Oh remembered. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my grandmother remembers. And so I had to be a woman of my word. And that's sort of how I ended up at the Miss Hampton pageant and, and one. So that's where this all started and it has taken off from there. So it started with Miss Hampton University and then what? Uh, my next pageant was the Miss Peninsula pageant, but I really just intended to stop at Miss Hampton. I wanted to be homecoming queen. I didn't realize that Miss Hampton had other duties. <laughs> Miss Hampton had a lot of, she still does, have a, have a lot really? of duties, a lot of leadership duties on campus. Um, and that really, and you know, for people who haven't kept up with pageants or think it is, you know, still the traditional beauty pageant, there is a lot of leadership, a lot of public speaking. It's, it's different, I think, than, you know, people my age remember the pageants being. Right, a ton of public speaking, and really all the public sees is that one night of competition on stage. Mm -hmm. But you're a title holder for a year, and it's, it's sort of your responsibility to take that position as, as a platform to stand on and share a message of positivity or goal setting or whatever it is that, that you want to champion. Um, but anyways, there's a lady on campus who was a former Miss Bahamas, and worked with a local pageant in the Miss America organization and nagged me, <laughs> I say nagged, encouraged <laughs> me. Encouraged, R reminded. Uh, uh, right, yeah, yeah. encouraged me for about a year that I should attempt to compete in the Miss America local pageant. And so finally I was just like, you know, let me just give this a try. Maybe I'll regret it if I don't give it a try and at least she'll get off my back. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have to thank her now, Tasha <laughs> Etter is her name. So I competed. At the pageant, I didn't tell really anybody I was competing. I called my mom a couple days before to let her know, but I was like, don't come, please don't come, because uh, I sort of was afraid I'd fall on my face. 
Well, night at the pageant, I won. I called my mother and said on the phone, hey, mom, I won. <laughs> and she was like, won what? She had completely forgotten I was competing in a pageant. Because you downplayed it so much, I bet. Yeah, I did, because I wasn't sure how I was mm -hmm. going to do. Um, so that year, I went to Miss Virginia, got first runner-up. Which... And Miss Virginia is cool. <laughs> I just, you know, I used to cover it when I worked in Roanoke. And it's like this whole weekend thing. It's a big deal in Roanoke. You're meeting all these people. Oh, and it's yeah. really cool. It, it is a really cool experience. And it's actually, I don't, now it's a week-long event. So you Ooh. arrive on Sunday until the following Saturday, which is the finals night of the pageant. Um, so I sort of arrived like a deer in headlights. I had no idea what I was doing. And Did they send someone with you? I mean, was someone helping you get ready? And yeah, certainly there was a team helping me get ready, but to compete against girls who had been doing this literally yeah. their entire lives, it was still quite intimidating. But after placing first runner up, I just sort of thought, well, if I can get second place, I can get first. Right, um, in your first year too. Right, so I went back the next year and won. Congratulations. Thank you. So what was that year like for you, being Miss Virginia? First of all, you got to go to the um, Miss America pageant. Right. It was an exciting year, an exhausting year, a grueling year. Um, what people don't realize, this organization, the USA organization, is a bit different. But in the America organization, as Miss Virginia, it's a full-time job. Did you have to, like, were you in school at that time? I was in school when I won. I was in my summer semester, so I had about three weeks that I kind of finished remotely. Mm -hmm. um, but then I was required to take the next year off of school and wow. off of work, and I was just Miss Virginia full time doing speaking appearances, uh, school appearances, uh, different community engagement type things. So it was a lot of traveling, a lot of driving back and forth across the state. But it's a big really, state, you know, <laughs> and there's parts of Virginia that aren't at all like Hampton Roads. <laughs> right, it is a big part, and this is kind of like the easternmost part of the state, but I was like in the westernmost part mm -hmm. of the state. So it was a good year to explore the state of Virginia, for sure, make some good connections. Uh, but it was a lot more challenging than I anticipated, but challenging in a good way, and certainly made me a stronger woman. Okay, so you were in school roughly at that time, but took a year off. Was mm -hmm. that a part of your master's or PhD? Yes. You'd already graduated from Hampton the first time. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Undergrad. And so then what? So I won after my second year of physical therapy school. So I sort of took that year off, and then I came back after that year to finish my final year of my, my doctor of physical therapy degree. And then kept entering pageants. And then, so my my final year, really about three, four months after I'd given out, up my Miss Virginia in the America System title, I competed for the first time at Miss Virginia USA. Um, again, it's still a pageant, but a very different type of pageant, a different group of girls, uh, some of the same girls, which was fun to see. Mm -hmm. And again, placed first runner up. So. I guess all you have to do is give me second place and you know I'm going to come back. <laughs> so I, I came back this year and, and won. That is great. Congratulations. So you haven't gone yet to um, the Miss USA pageant. At this point, we're not entirely sure uh, when that's going to happen, but it'll be sometime this year. Right. Well, sometime next year, 2016. Next year. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I think in fiscal years because right, of the city. Right, right. So, yeah, yeah, no, I, I hope not <laughs> sometime in the next month. That would totally freak me out. So it'll be sometime next year. Traditionally, um, it's in like June or July time frame, but that could all change. Uh, the organization's under new ownership, but good, exciting ownership. Yeah, it'll be a new, it'll be a new change. So right. do you, you don't have to take this year off, though. Like, you have some appearances, but right now you're trying to juggle around everything else that you do. Right, so I'm not required to take the year off of work or school and I'm able to do my Miss Virginia duties part-time in addition to my other jobs. So nights, weekends, um, both of my schedules, both at Riverside and at Hampton University are fairly flexible where I can fit in what I need to and, and make the most out of this year, even though I've got big girl bills and <laughs> a big girl job. <laughs> yes, you do. Now, how does that, okay, for people who have a more stereotypical idea of beauty pageants, um, you don't always see someone with a PhD being in that role. How do those two sides of your personality work together? Well, I think that the world of pageants has made me a little bit more prepared. Um, as a physical therapist, you do a lot of patient interaction. Everyone you meet is a stranger, essentially. And the same thing in academia. You're meeting a lot of strangers day in and day out. And as a professor, you have to be able to command the attention of your students. And so that's a lot of what pageants is about, is getting in front of a group of strangers and commanding attention and commanding respect from those strangers. So the two seem very different, but really do go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And um, in terms of having a platform or a cause, because a lot of people in the pageant system do have a passion about something, and you get to talk a lot, and, and you can use your fame and your attention to highlight um, things that you care about. Right. What has been your um, issue? So it sort of depends upon the audience. Um, undergrad, I was health and physical education, so I do have this really intense passion um, of encouraging people to be physically active and to eat right because that's really what's killing our children, it's killing our parents. It has been so hard on kids and they can't, you know, a lot of it is you, the, the parents both work, they can't play outside, they might live in a neighborhood where they can't be outside after dark. I mean, it's not like when I grew up where you could ride your bike anywhere. Right. Kids grow up more indoors and play video games and it's it's different. I know and I think research, I, I read somewhere that this is the first generation in history um, of children that are not expected to outlive their parents. And that's a scary thought. Yeah, it is. So hopefully we can do something about that. All it takes is a change. It takes a community effort for sure. Um, but one day at a time, educating one student at a time. And if I've always said if I can change one life, then I've, I've done my job. I can't expect to change the world, but I can change a world. And that's, that's just as powerful. Mm -hmm. It is. None of us can do it all. Right. right. Well, and so do you especially feel a connection to working with Girls, I mean, I, I assume that they're gonna look up to you as a role model. You know, I, I initially thought that and I sort of always targeted everything towards young women, but actually during my experience as Miss Virginia and the America system, I gave a speech and it was a little broader about goal setting, pursuing your dreams, really making a plan and executing that plan. Um, and afterwards there was a, a young gentleman that approached me and just, I mean, sort of told me more than I really needed to know, but said that he had been diagnosed with, with a condition, he had sort of lost hope, he had been contemplating suicide. I mean, it, it, oh, it wow. got really, really intense, and it was, a, it was a male student, and that's not typically the audience I thought I was impacting, um, but to know that my message crosses genders too, um, that, that was powerful. But I made sure he was getting counseling, so I, I made sure that that weight wasn't only on me. He was mm -hmm. getting counseling, he was dealing with um, his issues, but it was good to know that something I said uh, set off a light bulb in, light bulb in him and uh, hopefully helped him see that there was another way to success. That is really impressive. Yeah. And then as a physical therapist now, you probably work with more adults and probably older people as well. I do. I, I work with a lot of older adults, which I have a great time with. And it's good to help encourage someone to move and to see a person who has been debilitated to the point where they can't even get up out of their bed on their own um, and to get them back to a point where they're mobile and walking the community. So everything yeah. sort of has transitioned and gone hand in hand, although um, it kind of seems like all of my interests are all over the place. Where do you go from here, Desiree? <laughs> What's in your future besides uh, the Miss USA pageant? Well, we'll see. Um, I have written a book. I've co-authored a book entitled Love Affair with My Hair, Why Black Women Cheat on Health. And so that's a Oh, tell me more about that. That's a great title. Thank you. So it's in, to encourage women of color to work out and be physically active. Um, so often we use the excuse of not wanting to sweat our hair out um, as an excuse not to work out. And I know I've been guilty of it too, but. I don't think that's just black women. That's, you know. Well, good, good. There's a universal theme to that, but also, you know, women don't take care of themselves as much. Or they might, you know, we might care about the appearance, but not all the things What's that make it up and the long-term health. We tend to, I know it's stereotypical, but tend to care for others mm -hmm. better than we care for ourselves sometimes. Absolutely. So it's a book that not only has a 12-week workout regimen that's scheduled around a woman's hair appointment. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love this! But you know, you have to do what you have to do. That's uh, right. But also kind of provides a, a cultural perspective and a historical perspective as to why hairstyling is so important to women because there is a, there is a social and cultural aspect to that but then also provide some ideas for nutrition and making sure that you're putting the right things into your body as well. Um, so I, I like speaking. I love doing public speaking. I love doing on-air stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to transition and do a little bit more of that, maybe some more health advocacy um, on a broader perspective. So we'll kind of see where this year takes me. That sounds really exciting. That is so cool. All right, I'm already thinking about how we could do a show to get, to help motivate girls, women, 
to, um, to be more physically fit. And I mean, you know, me too, I need it too. I can sit here and say <laughs> all the right stuff, but doing it's hard. How, yeah. do you, how do you motivate yourself? Again, for me, it's important to be a woman of my word. And that's always been, I don't know if it's something my parents did or said. I think my grandmother was a really good example of that. Um, but if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And if I encourage somebody else to do it, I, I can't in good conscience tell somebody else to do something I'm not willing to do myself. So Desiree, you initially weren't going to come to Hampton and obviously you've done amazing things since you've been here. Can you look back and talk about, you know, why you picked Hampton or, or if you would be a different person? How Hampton University or city has influenced the, the you that's sitting here today? Well, I tell people all the time that coming to Hampton was literally the best decision I've ever made in my life. Um, I initially wanted to go to a state school. A big state school was my number one choice. They didn't offer me any scholarship money. And when Hampton offered me a full academic scholarship, so that's really how I ended up at Hampton. But Hampton has a way of embracing each and every student um, and making them feel like you can truly take on the world with, with good preparation, with hard work, determination, and, and a plan. There's really the sky's the limit. And Hampton tells you that from day one and they mold you and kind of try to create that in you. And it's, it, I guess it's up to the student at that point whether or not they embrace that opportunity. Um, but Dr. Harvey, the whole Hampton University community, the city of Hampton has been behind me since day one, 110% since I was really a freshman up until now, but uh, certainly in, in competing in pageants, they've been behind me. And so it's a big weight to represent the entire Commonwealth, mm -hmm. but it, it's great to know that I have the city of Hampton and my Hampton University family cheering me on every step of the way. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming to talk to us. Thank you. And I wish you the best of luck in, uh, in your next pageant. Thanks. <laughs> and thank you for watching. I hope you will join me in keeping an eye on Desiree and her future, whether that's pageants or being a physical therapist, writing another book, or um, in personal appearances and inspiring others to be more active and more involved. Thanks for watching.